we'd finally made it past the Sahara to the small town of Djama. Djama was known to be one of the harder border crossings of the journey. Some guy called Zargan basically runs the place and you either pay your way through or you wait. <laughs> We ended up waiting a total of three days alongside our new German friends, Hati and Clemens. Together, we came to a compromise where we would be allowed into Senegal for a week. Aside from our car getting stuck in the sand this one time, Senegal went really smoothly. We spent that week by the beach, taking it easy, chilling with the locals. I didn't feel much, just sort of enjoyed the moment. You're a grand grimpeur, huh? But with very limited time in Senegal, it wasn't too long before we were back on the road towards a new country. stop would be Gambia, a small English-speaking country inside the borders of Senegal. Next up would be Guinea-Bissau, a little Portuguese-speaking country right in the middle of election day. By the time we got to Guinea, the roads are getting pretty shitty. We'd wake up every single morning with a new flat tire, sometimes two. It would take us five, six hours to do a hundred kilometers and there were potholes everywhere. Once we got to Côte d'Ivoire, we were once again stuck at the border for three days. But this time, our negotiation tactics had shifted. We created a bunch of these fake documents, basically giving us permission into the country. And it worked. We ended up coming to this compromise with the border agent, where he would let us in if we drove him all the way to Abidjan. Around the same time, my good friend Christian was coming home after five years in Canada. I spent about two weeks living with the family. And during that time, Thomas flew back to Canada and I would just hang out with the locals. Aside from that, I also got malaria, which was not the best. But before leaving, I wanted to go on one last adventure with my friend Christian.
it's funny because before leaving to Africa, so many people were warning me about the dangers. And a year later, recording this, I feel like West Africa is the most beautiful place I've been to. And there's just something about it I haven't found anywhere else. And so if there's anything I can take back from this trip is to maybe re rethink or reconsider what we have. I feel like we tend to think that the way Western society works is better and it is in a lot of ways, but there's also a warmth and richness to the culture here that we lack up north. The sense of community, it's hard to explain if you haven't been there, but it's been on my mind ever since I left, and I know I'll be back soon.